Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels, and this week, the parable of the Master and the Servant, which is found in the Gospel of Luke. It's a short parable, but there are aspects to it that I've never heard touched on or explained, so let's take a look. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say to him, when he has come from the field, Immediately go, sit down to meet. Luke 17, 7 It's rare for an employer to tell his employee to rest and have a bite to eat, and will not rather say to him, Make ready my supper, and gird thyself, and serve me, whilst I eat and drink, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Luke 17, 8 it's hard to explain this, since the sharp decrease in the home service industry has made it less relatable, but in cases like this where a servant was given tasks to perform inside the home, they were expected to put their employer before themselves. It wouldn't be much of a service if you made your employer wait around for his meal until after you'd finished yours. Doth he thank that servant for doing the things which he commanded him? Luke 17, 9 For a long time this puzzled me because it does sound rude not to thank someone for doing something like this for you, at first. Again, however, I think this is mostly because home servants are so much less common now than they once were. This person working for his master isn't a slave. He's not being held against his will. He's also not a friend or visitor who's doing a favor for his employer, however. In fact, the situation is really quite simple when you think about it. The master doesn't thank his servant for serving him first, because he's literally being paid to do that very thing. I've heard this parable in Mass so often, and yet this aspect of it is never brought out. This servant is being rewarded for his sacrifices and efforts, not with thanks and congratulations or other expressions of personal gratitude, but with actual payment for his work, something far more valuable. Anyone who has a job knows the type of environment this is. Are you thanked by your boss every time you fill an order, or enter information into a database, or make a phone call, or attend a scheduled meeting at work? Of course not. But it's not because he or she doesn't value your effort. They do value it, and they express that value by giving you money or other goods in exchange. We should see our relationship with God in exactly this way. We will be rewarded by God in time, but first we need to finish the workday, our earthly lives, and reach payday, heaven. I think not. So you also, when you shall have done all these things that are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which we ought to do. Luke 17.10 Here we depart slightly from the parable, because the servant in the parable plowed a field or fed cattle, both of which improve the profit of the landowner he works for. However, serving your employer before yourself, at least, isn't especially profitable. It's convenient, to be sure, but he won't make any less money if he's served last. By contrast, our relationship with God is much more closely described here. No matter what we do in obedience to the will of God, we don't make God any richer or give him any good thing that he previously lacked. After all, if God was lacking in any good thing, he wouldn't be perfect and therefore wouldn't be God. However, we do still have moral obligations to fulfill in life, and although our service to God doesn't profit God in any way, it does bring us tremendous profit, because God has generously offered that. God sees value in good deeds, despite not personally needing them, and will offer an eternal reward to those who keep on that path, or seek repentance through his sacraments if they fail. Next, the two sons. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.